Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Hi, good evening, good evening, good evening. It's a beautiful Sunday. The next day before the, uh, what should I say, the uh, the working day, um, where we get cracking, um, making sure that we serve the queen. <laughs> yeah, very funny statements there, you know. Um, I got some update today on Manchester, the shooting in Manchester, and also I was speaking to Miss Sanchez. Alessia, who is the Lord Mayor of Barking, a Jamaican, all the way from Cambridge. And that's Cambridge in St. James. So, uh, so I, I like for you to just um, just share this video in the meantime, and uh, thank you for coming. Those on Instagram as well, uh, those on Facebook, uh, those on wherever you are, yeah, um, share this. Uh, Matt Birch, Don McDonald, thank you for coming. Yep. It's it's slightly a bit raining. It's slightly a bit raining here um, in lovely little Wayne, which is drizzling, which is good, not overpowering or anything like that. Thank you. Thank you. Coffee, coffee. Thank you. You know, before I before I really get get down into business, um, I just want to share briefly. Uh, you know, last night I, I did a discussion on um, what I did a discussion on. I did a discussion on some positive stories. Yeah, and I said to uh, people, send me your positive story. And um, what is your positive story? I believe that it is important that. Let me just turn this down. That's my soundtrack for my show. Yeah. I believe that it is important that um, we have a, a positive story amidst everything which is out there, which is negative. Because what is negative sells very easily and it is naturally for it to just be uh, be sold or so. Um I, I, I deliberately said, let's have some positive stories and persons inbox me uh, different things and also said um, that they should post it as well uh, because we are quick to share the positive, the negative stories. We're quick to share things which are not great. Uh, we are quick to share fighting. We're quick, quick to share negative stuff. We're quick to share um, Trump. <laughs> which negative. We're quick to share the negatives of Brexit, um, but we are not so good and very quick on sharing positive stories positive light um, and don't get me wrong I strongly believe and I believe as well that we should highlight the negative stuff because unless you highlight the negative things as well you are not able to deal with it hence the reason why one would highlight the whole aspect of knife and gun crime because that is also something which is very crucial um, but at the same time while you highlight that you actually navigate and find some also solution hence the reason why we came up with Solution Oriented Summit, which is uh, uh, creating a platform for effective discourse, seeking solutions and impacting action. I believe somewhat that is my life. To a certain I believe that is my life call. Creating opportunities, creating platform, creating solution, impacting actions with effective discourse. I believe that not everybody will have the same um, thought pattern, the same thinking, but I believe as much as possible, Everyone should have the opportunity to engage. Everyone should have the opportunity to disagree. Everyone should have the opportunity to agree to disagree as much as possible. I want to thank for those who are on Instagram, Nan. Um, let me just um, paste what the topic is. I hope it can come true. I don't know if it's going to come true or so, 
but the topic is about um uh, unfortunately on instagram land you might not be able to see my guest which is sancha alasia um the lord mayor of london who is going to come on shortly but before i do that i want to just touch on something very interesting um in in manchester moss side um this is in the uk uh, there's been a news about um, there's a Caribbean event which is happening, which happens yearly. It is 42 years of the carnival, and it has this highlight regarding the Windrush. Windrush is something which is very profound at this time. Um, most celebration this year, the 90 uh, independence of Jamaica, they, everyone is talking about the Windrush factor. And and uh, so therefore, Manchester have this carnival, just like oh, the UK in London is going to have this carnival shortly. And apparently there was some shooting last night about 2.30 in the morning. Two children were among 10 people hurt in a shooting in the Moss Side area of Manchester, which police are treating as attempted murder. Uh, I, want you to, I want you to listen to that very carefully. I just want to dissect something. Moss Side shooting, two children among 10 injured. Yep. Think about that for a second. Two children were among 10 people hurt in a shooting in the Moss Side area of Manchester, which police are treating as attempted murder. They were injured with what police believe was a shotgun with pellets in it, rounds at a street party in Claremont Road about 2.30 British Standard Time. That is early in the morning. Right? Victims included two children over the age of 12 with pellet-type wounds, were not seriously injured, but the man with the broken leg was in a serious condition. Another two people attended hospital late on Sunday to be checked over, but their injuries are not thought to be serious, uh, police said. Now, when you hear that 10 persons were injured with shooting, I think what resonated with a lot of persons was saying, hang on a second, 10 people got shot in Moss Side, right? Two children got hurt in Moss Side through shooting, right? And therefore, what the media is actually doing right here is being somewhat economical with the truth. I did a little digging. And I reached out to my people in uh, Manchester just to try to get another side of the coin. Mark, you always say it's always best to start from the position of fact, the position of what actually happened. But sometimes one don't know the established factors yet. Now, I, I spoke to someone there in, in Manchester and, and they said 10 people did got hurt. Um, but the question is whether it was by gunshot wounds. Because when you have a shooting or whatever like that, well, you have some places where people run towards, I think in Jamaica, in some aspects, in areas of Jamaica, people run towards the shooting. But most times people run away from shooting. So really and truly, two young people or children were hurt. But what I'm getting from the ground is that it wasn't by the gun shooting. Right? It was through the fracas and through the whole um, running away. And of course, you'll have situations like in any situation, even in Manchester, when they had the bombing. Um, People actually, a lot of people got hurt based on running, based on people um, stampede. I mean, Hillsborough, for arguments, a lot of people got killed by the, the stampede, right? But for the fact that the place wasn't safe, but for the fact that there was a shooting, then what you had is a situation whereby people got hurt. Yeah, the guy was at the center of the incident. He got shot in the leg, which I got to understand. And this carnival, I understand, is over 42 years it has been happening, right? What this person's saying and what I'm getting on the ground is that it needs to be very clear that the carnival finished at 8 p.m., but there has been this illegal party which happens every year on Claremont Road, which and this incident happened at 2.30 p.m. So it really had nothing to do really with the carnival per se, right? And that is something that needs to be... Um, Need, that need to be established and need to be very clear because somewhat it somewhat will give the picture that the Caribbean carnival um, of, of a Caribbean heritage had somewhat disobedient persons there during the course of the carnival. That is not the case. That is not what happened, right? And and what I understand is that uh, there, there, was a, there was supposed to be... A, in view of the disturbing shooting on Claremont Road in the early hours of the morning, Faith Network in, for Manchester in consultation with local councillor, we stand together and the senior officers of GMP will be holding a peace gathering outside the main entrance of Alexandra Park 
on Small Day Avenue off Claremont Road. This gathering is for faith and community leaders to collectively engage local residents, ensuring, reassuring, and affirming our message of evil has no place in our community. There was another story which came out saying that apparently there was someone showing off a gun. Now, if someone was showing off a gun, I, quest I asked the question, then why do you need, uh, 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 what should I say, um, a peace gathering or so, uh, you know, in re regarding um, the shooting, if someone was playing the gun. So things are a bit sort of sketchy. But I got to understand as well. I got to understand as well. And this is somewhat even with the um, carnival, which is happening in London, whereby they're talking about trying to move it, trying to make it uh, diversify, trying to change up the whole game. What I understand, ladies and gentlemen, is this, that this carnival, which has been going for 42 years in, in Manchester, they are seeking to turn it into a festival of diversity for all people. But I was reminded that there's also the Chinese have their Chinese New Year event, which no one can actually intervene in. The Asians have the, the Mela, which no one can seem to intervene in. But of course, everyone can come and enjoy it. Everyone can enjoy the Chinese um, New Year but no one can actually get in there and intervene and say, can you make it a bit more diversified? The Asians have the Mela. No one can actually get into that and say, make it a bit more diversified. But, um, you know, you can actually come and you can watch. So with the carnival now, why are they wanting to change that? Why do they want it to make it a bit more urban, a bit where everybody can be a part? So what do you, ha what do you see happening now? And this is very crucial. This is very important. Is for the, the, the carnival now to be engaging and to be accommodating with everyone while others are not able and will not open up their doors. Think about that for a second. And I believe that is what some people are talking about. Maybe there is a, 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 a conspiracy which is going on there. The media was there. ITV, BBC, LWT, everybody was there understanding in Manchester looking for something, looking for a story. Donald Trump is not tweeting much more. Um, Brexit is sort of quiet. The, the Boris Johnson Burka thing is sort of dwindling down. So they need the news. Chicago, over 60, 70 persons got killed or got shot in one few days or a few hours or whatever like that. UK somewhat always try to find something to marry that. So we've got to be careful with the and how they're economical with the truth. So it needs to be dissected. So I'm dissecting this one and giving out a perspective to say that what you see is not always what you get. All right. So, so that's 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 the situation there. So um Sancho Elysia, where are you? I saw you earlier and you went away. I want you to come back, if anything, because um, ladies and gentlemen, one of the good um stories out there. And, uh, you know, is that we have people in very key and effective position in the UK, right? We tend to most times see and, and what is highlighted is normally those which are not very positive. But sometime in the backside of the desert, you have some key individuals. The article says, the new mayor of Barking and Dagenham is the first Caribbean woman to hold the post. The new mayor of Barking and Dagenham is the first Caribbean woman to hold the post. Her name is Sanchez Alessia, right? Um, she's a councillor um, for the Albion Ward um, in, in, um, in Barking and Dagenham. And, uh, and as a mayor, she promised to promote diversity, um, especially in relation to disabilities. Um, Sanche, as a matter of fact, hails from Cambridge in St. James in Jamaica. Oh, yes. Sanche, coincidentally, is also on my team for Facilitators for Better Jamaica, the lobby group. We've been working together for years. Interestingly, Sanchez is also a, a Labour person, and I am a Conservative. But that doesn't matter. The key and most important thing is that persons are able to interact and persons are able to have, what should I say, effective dialogue 
because there's a key aspect of how people actually can work together. I've got some other great stories on uh, coming up next month when I when I when I resume filming for the Silver and Show. Um, there's going to be a raft of different guests, not the guests which you normally see out there, which is doing things. Because I I, I start to think recently whereby the persons who somewhat speak into the world, speak into life, speak into situations are the ones who are up there in the public domain. Those who are maybe with some skill set, they may be great runners, maybe great boxers, maybe great um, footballers or whatever like that. And somehow these persons somewhat get the, they get the limelight as if to say they have the full authority and how things should be and how things are. And, and a result of that, sometimes they are not the best role models, they're not the best mentors, but society pushes them there, all right? And as a result of that, what you see happening is a situation whereby we are missing out on some of the other key voices which are out there, all right? I'm inviting um, Sanchez Lacey, I've sent you an invite, um, and I look forward to her to come on in the next few seconds few moments um let me see let me see if we can get a no answer from live video guests okay um sancho what you do in the meantime while while i wait for you is um is to uh, i know you have sent a request um what i want to do sancho um there, there's a key thing in regards to uh, facebook live is that you've got to make sure your phone is uh, is horizontal or, or vertical in order for it to, to to link in with myself. Make sure the phone is, is is vertical. So I'm trying to get her on here. It says no answer. No answer from video guests. And if you can use your your phone, that would be great. Using your phone, sometimes the laptop or the the um. The, the, the sometimes doesn't work properly so while while i wait until i get sancho on uh, let me see if i can try it again no answer just bear with me bear with me ladies and gentlemen okay right so 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 regarding the world regarding the world thing um in uh, let me see let me see i think i saw some some comments here earlier um, regarding what is happening in Manchester. Uh, well, thank you, June Morrell Harrison Flores, uh, First Lady. Um, thank you on Instagram land. Uh, thank you. Um, what? 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 Sorry, I, I'm having a conversation with Chance with Sanchez now. Um, Sleep Dre joined. Request to be in the video. Um, uh, Sleek Dre, uh, uh, what do you want to share in the video? Let me know. That's from Instagram land. Uh, Sancho, if you uh, send me another uh, invite, uh, make sure that you're using your, uh, your your phone. It is best. Make sure the phone is set vertical, sorry, horizontal. Horizontal is, is better. So it, 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 uh, it aligns itself with my with what I'm doing here now and uh, and let us see if we can actually get it going um, so what you need to do is to... bear with me ladies and gentlemen okay Okay, all right, um, <clears throat> good. Okay, Sancho, I know you're sending me a request here. Um, let me see if I can if I can tempt anyone else to come online, if anything, to talk about um, anything. Um, because Sancho, somehow I'm not getting you. I'm not getting your request. Um, I 
let me see. I'm gonna I'm gonna message you, Sanchi, in the meantime. I'm gonna message you. Um, let me see. Let me see if I can take it off. Yep. Cause what, ladies and gentlemen, just bear me a second. I'm just trying to get hold of um, Sanchi to see exactly how we can actually crack this thing. Uh, let me ask you a question. Ah, here we go. Let me see something here. I think I'm getting something there. I think we have cracked it. It is saying adding. Going once, going twice, going three times. A little perseverance and we get it going. Hello there. <laughs> Good I'm evening, get, um, Right. Yeah. The Hello. Lord, Lord Mayor Sanchia Alessia. I, Hello. I, 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 I was hoping that you'd have had your um the 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 blings the bling blings you know with you it's today. It's not one twenty four seven. Not twenty four seven. Well, Sanchia, listen. Um, good evening, and thank you for for coming um out of your busy schedule. Um, and I understand you are somewhere now in Wales, isn't it? Yes, yeah. Yeah. Uh Sancho, listen. Um you you are um you're from Jamaica, from Cambridge, St. James, isn't it? Yes, that's right, yeah. I'm just gonna ask you, from Cambridge, St. James, um, Jamaica, straight out of Jamaica, to become the first Caribbean um mayor of Caribbean heritage in Barking and Dagenham. Can you give us a synopsis of that journey? Well, it started, <laughs> it started very early. It started at three months old. <laughs> I came yes. to London when I was three. Well, well my mum brought me to London at three months old. Yes. So I've lived in London all of my life, really. Right. Um, and I got involved um, in the Labour Party in 2006. And yes. um, was first elected as a councillor in 2010. So that yes. was eight years ago now. But we, we also, you and I, we did the Shadow MP scheme with Operation Black Vote as yes, well. Yes, I, well, I did that in 2006. Yeah, Operation Black Vote um, are a really great organisation. They work towards getting more um, ethnic minorities in politics. And they've been running this MP Shadow scheme for... Um, well, well over 10 years now, because I did it in 2006. Yes. That, so that, that was the that same time. I, same time I did it. We did it together. We were in the same batch, wasn't it? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes that's right. So the, I was paired with um, Sadiq Khan, at, who at the time was a new MP. Oh, yes. yes. Um, and he was um, transport minister. So that was wow. quite interesting. And then from there, I bumped into... Um, Diane Abbott's PA, Carol, and I asked whether I could shadow Diane Abbott, so I shadowed Diane Abbott as well. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, so that was, it really gave me an insight into the daily working lives of MPs and what they did mm -hmm. in their constituencies and in Westminster. And that, that's correct, because at the same time, I was, um, I was paired with Andrew Pelling, who is the, he was yeah, a conservative sorry, MP yeah. for yeah, he's now and a then Labour, because um, well, I don't know if he's still a Labour councillor, but he changed. Yeah, he? exactly, yeah. exactly. And then because I had a good rapport and relationship with Dominic Grieve, um, was a former Justice Attorney General who was giving the Conservative a headache, we just continued with, with working with him. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yes. Okay. But, te but but tell us, Sanchez, uh, separate and apart from you being a councillor as well, um, in, you know. Most times I try to get hold of you, you are in Europe. You're always in oh, Europe right. for some reason. Please explain, yeah. because you see, you see, what it is, Sancho, one of the things that I want to get out there is that people see persons walking around up and down, and there are so many positive and impactful stories of persons like yourself. And, and the bit about Europe, the work that you've been doing in Europe, can you explain on that? Because sometimes I don't know. I want to try to get all of you used to hearing <laughs> Europe or traveling to Europe, Brussels, all those sort of things. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that started at the beginning of 2015 because 
In 2014, I stood to be um, an MEP, a member of the European Parliament. So I was one of the Labour candidates yes. for the European Parliament. But I didn't win um, the election. But following that, um, this, this committee was suggested to me. It's called the European Union Committee of the Regions. And basically what it does, it looks at the work of the European Commission and the European Parliament and how it affects local and regional governments. So I... Um, spoke to a few people about it and I said well I should put my name forward so I filled in the application form and um, they got back to me to say I was on the committee so I was appointed by the then Prime Minister David Cameron in 2015 to sit on that committee and um, yes. yeah we do work across all um, subjects so it could be arts and culture it could be fisheries it could be um, cohesion um, gender equality um, all, all areas, um, basically, yeah. at the European level. And and so, so what you're saying, even though you put yourself forward as a member of the European Parliament, you were yeah. unsuccessful, but yeah. at the same time, the opportunity existed yeah. for you to still operate within that sphere, isn't it? That's right, yeah. So the opportunity came along to to do work in Europe because U European affairs is a passion of mine. So yes, yeah, so I've been doing that since the beginning of 2015. Yeah. And, and what, what's, what's, what are some of the challenges? Um, I mean, um, when you, when you go there, one of the questions that people ask, do you see many persons looking like yourself in the form of um, color? Um, uh, no, there, there isn't. There's about all together. I'm just trying to remember off the top of my head, how many members there are. There's probably about maybe 400 members, I can't remember the top of my head, across all the different 28 um, European member states. And three of us are black African Caribbean, two of us from the UK, myself and Jeanette Arnold, who's an assembly member um, yes. for, for Waltham Forest um, and Hackney, on, and she, she works at City Hall. And there's a guy called Peter Bosman, who is the mayor of uh, a town in Slovenia. Um, so there are just three Black African Caribbean out of about four hundred. Okay. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And and um, do you do you see it as a challenge or you see it as a you know sometimes? Um, yeah. I mean, I've I've embraced it because obviously you you can't hide, can you? Um, so I've embraced that opportunity. Um, and, and made my views known on diversity. And I was appointed um, as the gender equality representative for my political party. So every political party in the UK affiliates to a European party. So the Labour Party affiliates to the Party of European Socialists um, in Europe. So I am the gender equality spokesperson for that. So no, I, I've, I've um, got involved and... Um, the, the only sad thing would be, you know, if Brexit happens, then two out of the three of us, because two of us are from the UK, that only would leave the one um, Black Af Black African Caribbean member left out of 400. OK, so, so what you're saying, with a successful Brexit, successful mm. Brexit, um, it would actually pull you guys out and leave in one pr Black person yeah. there. it would pull the UK out of the European Committee of the Regions, we would be out of the European Parliament um, and the European Commission. Right. Okay, so therefore, it's while, while the UK or, or those who are Brexiters might see Brexit as a positive step in reclaiming the borders also of the United mm -hmm. Kingdom, what, what Brexit does also, it actually reduce the level of um, diversity yeah, because Europe. even if you look at the European Parliament, and that's not very diverse either, there's only one um, black African Caribbean female, Sisi Kayenge from, from Italy. She used to be the Italian integration minister. Um, but we have um, a few BME um, MEPs. So again, when um, the, the UK MEPs leave the European Parliament, again, the, the diversity will be reduced. Because the UK, whatever body we sit on in Europe, we tend to be the most diverse. Right, right, right. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you so much for joining in on The Late One with Silver. And I've got my uh, friend and uh, fellow Jamaican, 
who hail from Cambridge, um, St. James, living in the UK. She's a mayor of Barking and Dagenham, uh, a, a constituency in the UK, and she's the first Caribbean woman to hold that post. And uh, her name is Councillor Sancia Alessia. Um, please like and share this video as well and let people know about this because, as I said, I'm on a quest to actually highlight as much as possible, which is what I do on my platform as well. But I'm capitalizing on the use of, on the use of Facebook to also showcase um, fantastic persons who are doing great things, which may look as if they're not. But when you get to understand, you'll be shocked. Mm -hmm. um, Sanchez, in regards to Albion Ward and in regards to Barkin and Dagenham, um, what is the... You you had a an issue years ago with the the BNP. Yes. Right. And and you what was what was the the drive? What was the BNP and what was the drive to to wipe out the BNP out of Park and Dagenham? Unless there's and it came in since. I know they were wiped out. Yes. Mm. Well, in two thousand and six, um, twelve BNP councillors were elected to Barkin and Dagenham Council, which is the highest um, number of councillors that they've had in any council in the country. And they could have potentially had more councillors than that, but they didn't stand candidates in every ward. So when I moved to Dagenham in 2007, I was part of a, of a, of a real rebuilding strategy of the local Labour Party. Um, and we worked really hard to um, rebuild trust with the residents and speak to them on a regular basis about what their issues and problems were and how we could work together as communities to solve them. Yes. And that trust took a number of years to build up. So it took about three years to yes. regain um, the residents' trust. But in the um, local elections in 2010, we did um, defeat all of the 12 BNP councillors in the ward where I stood um, each ward in Barkley and Dagenham has three councillors. So in the ward where I stood, two of the three at the time were BNP, one of them being Robert Bailey, the London Regional Coordinator. Um, so he was defeated, his colleague was defeated. And they haven't come back since, but the reason why they haven't come back since is because we keep that communication and connection with the residents going. We don't take them for granted. Mm -hmm. Sancho, what... what... In, in in the UK now, the UK, which is a very, uh, especially London, which is very cosmopolitan and very diverse, and uh, what what what's the message you will give to persons in the Caribbean community about getting involved with the political system? Uh, I, I post earlier today that you're coming on, and someone said, "Good for her." Yes, you know? I saw and, that. Yeah. Yeah. What, what is the impact you're making and what is the encouragement for other persons to get involved in politics in the UK? Well, there is a saying, if you don't do politics, politics will do you. Politics affects, particularly local government, affects all of our lives. If we think of the things that local government has a hand in, education, if you have children, um, yes. environmental issues, your, your bin collections, um, parks, green spaces, um, planning, regeneration, housing, um, and there's so many other areas as well. So if we're not at the table influencing those decisions, then decisions will be made about us without us. So it is imperative for us to get involved. Now, not everybody has to be an elected politician. There's different yeah. ways that people can get involved. People can be political activists. They can run campaigns on single issues. There's lots of ways that people can get involved, but either you should, you know, aspire to hold elected office or find ways to influence those that have elected office mm. so that they they hear your views and they know, um, you know, your perspective on things so that, they, that that can be taken into account. It doesn't necessarily mean things will always go exactly the way you want it to go. That's yeah. impossible with, as you say, the diverse range of people that we serve. But... Um, there have been some successes um, and so um, without our voices at the table those wouldn't have come about so yes we really do need to um, get involved you know and, and our political places of power should reflect the diversity of the population that they're seeking to serve and that's not just a tick box thing they you know I really believe that better decisions will be made when people from different backgrounds and cultures sit down 
and and work together especially when you look at the climate that we're, we're working in at the moment it's very challenging climate because of the multitude of issues that we have to deal with reduce funding and so on so you need people from different backgrounds and cultures to, to sit together and work out how these problems are going to be solved <laughs> It is very interesting what you said about people from different um, backgrounds and people from different um, religious, um, whatever, sit yeah. down and work together. Uh, uh, let's let's look on a topic which is um, a national debate which is going on mm -hmm. with um, Boris Johnson um, words regarding the burqa. Mm -hmm. um, Barking and Dagenham is also very cosmopolitan. A lot of Asians there because mm -hmm. I used to work within the council. Maybe you didn't know I used to be a lawyer in Barkingham and Dagenham mm -hmm. Council. Um, mm. at some point. Um, what, what do you think of those comments? Do those comments foster, foster a better relationship or is it an mm. opportunity for discussion to come to the table and really discuss this matter regarding the burqa ban? Mm. Burqa, yeah. I mean, I don't think those comments are helpful. Um, I think the key thing is that women have to be allowed um, to wear whatever it is that they want to wear. So we shouldn't have men telling um, women what to wear i don't i don't think that's that's kind of acceptable um but we must ensure that women um have the free choice um to wear what they want to wear and if women want want to cover up then they should be allowed to just as in the other vein if they want to not wear very much at all they should be able to do that and not yeah. be harassed either so it's up to yeah. us as women to decide what it is that we want to wear, but we must have the choice and we must have a free choice in that. But I don't think the comments are that helpful because it's not fostering um, positive um, relations. But do, but, do you, do you, but do you believe that there is a need for these discussions and for person? Because I think society, and, and I mentioned this last night, that society is becoming aware where people shut down views or opinions mm. which deem to be offensive and when mm. that happens Sanchia you have a blockage whereby people want to explode because I can't mm. speak I can't share my mm. views mm. you know mm. what, what do you say about that it's the time to come I think I mean tolerant. obviously we have you know obviously we have the right to free speech but I think when we're um and we should be able to debate and discuss difficult issues, but we should do it in a respectful manner. So yeah. we need to be mindful of, of, of the way that we're expressing ourselves if we are going yes. to be respectful. So I think the manner in which the comments were expressed were not that helpful. Um, and I think, again, we, we have to be careful um, in terms of telling people um, what they can and can't do. Um, yes. It is for that... Um, community and that group of people to have that debate in terms of what they they do want to and do not to wear what to wear and certainly men should not be dictating to women what they should and should not be wearing yes yeah but Sanchi, um the world is changing whereby everything is becoming a bit gender neutral so after a while yeah absolutely, men and women. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know? there, there, you know? there are there are various categories of, of genders you you know it's not just male and female anymore and 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 that's fluid and, and that's how things are progressing but again um you know that doesn't mean that debate and discussion should happen but it needs to be done in a respectful way and it needs to be done with those people affected at the heart of the discussion and leading yes. that, those discussions i'm going to be with, i'm going to be a bit slightly facetious because um uh, my colleague um, reminded me when I said Councillor Sanchez Lacey, he said, mm. the Lord, they said the Lord Mayor. Is that no, your I'm not the Lord Mayor. So you've got two Lord Mayors in London. You've got the Lord Mayor yes. um, of Westminster and yes. the Lord Mayor of the City of London. And then yes. in, in Hackney, where you've worked before, in Hackney, Lewisham, Tower Hamlets and Newham, you have directly elected mayors. So the residents directly elect their mayors and their executive mayors and their leaders of their councils. In, yes. the, in the majority of the London boroughs, the London the, the councillors of that borough annually choose who they want their mayor to be. And that mayor is kind of like a civic ambassador um, right. and first citizen of the borough. So, so I'm in, in that category where I'm civic ambassador and first citizen of, of Barking and Dagenham. 
So, so your title would be if someone is going to uh, what do they say? Yeah. Civic ambassador, or okay, you're the mayor. Um, well, there's various ways that you know I can be addressed. I can just be addressed simply as the mayor. Um, I can be addressed as Councillor Sanchia Lassia or her worshipful the mayor of Barking and Dagnum. Um, so yeah, there's a there's a few ways that I can be addressed when I'm performing my official duties. Okay. Um, so therefore, what you're saying is that um, it's a, a position which is elected by your colleagues. Yes, yes so this is a, right. So this is a yearly. This is a, a you yes, serve a, we, a term. every year. The councillors um, on Barking and Dagenham Council and the majority of councillors councils in London choose who they want their mayor to be. Can I then ask you what is the the daily role um, mm. other than other than having this car waiting outside. Yeah. I always remember this. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, dear. Yeah. Um, yes, there is a car, there is a chauffeur, and there's a driver. Um, I guess, for me, it's championing the community. So yes. I've been going around to different community projects and seeing the work that they've been doing. Um, yes. I've been going around to various... Um, religious organizations and I've also um, held events myself so I held an event celebrating 70 years of Windrush and the contribution yes. that those migrants made at the Ford factory because many people who know Dagnum will know that Ford was it was a big part of Dagnum so and yeah. I'm, I'm having various um, events throughout my mayoral year so I'm going to try and do some things, as you said um, in your introduction, one of the things that I want to do is champion equality, diversity and inclusivity, particularly disabilities, because I have a number of health challenges um, and I want to champion those with health challenges and get it as something that's normal, where we see people with both visible and hidden disabilities out there um, doing, you know, whatever it is they want to do, whether political or non-political. Yeah. Sancho, over the years that I know you, um, you are deemed, are you seen like um, a quiet storm or someone who <laughs> is, you know, mm. the, the, the people, people I, I find, I, what's the right word? I can't find the right word. Uh, it's like you're on, uh, what's the word? No, nobody can know exactly what you're mm. about. You know, you're, you're a silent <laughs> storm, you're a silent storm, a, a power, mm. powerhouse. I see that as a powerhouse. What do you mm. see as the state of Black Britain today mm. in comparison to what Black Britain may have been in the past? Mm. What we're seeing in Black Britain now is whereby there is a, a pulling back of the positions that um, Black Britain had, where mm. other persons are coming in and displacing Black Britain. What do you see as a state of Black Britain now? Is it a retrograde step or we're moving forward? Mm. Mm. That's a huge question because, you know, Black Britain can encompass so many different um, facets, you see. Yes. And so many different areas and issues. I mean, you know, we have made progress in some aspects, but I think the progress is slow. I think, yes. I think the pace of, of, of change is slow. Um, if you look, for example, at the number of MPs, you know, you know Black um, African Caribbean MPs in Parliament, you, you may think that they have increased in number, and numerically they have increased in number. But if you look percentage-wise um, at what the proportion should be that should reflect the population, actually the percentage hasn't changed that much because yes. the percentage needs to keep going up to keep pace with the change in face of London. And so when you look at the numbers, yes, the numbers have gone up, but percentage wise, it's not actually going up. Um, and so I just think the pace of change is really slow. And you do wonder whether you will see, you know, full equality and full representation in, in your lifetime, in your children's lifetime, in your grandchildren or great grandchildren's lifetime. You know, it may not even come that far down the line. Um, and, you know, way back, you know, when Martin Luther King was saying we should be judged 
by the content of our character, not the colour of our skin. But yet, um, we still face challenges up until today. What? Yeah. What? 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 What do you see as a blockage? Mm. What do you see as as, as oh, the blockage? Well, I know. It's, I know they're loaded questions. Yeah, we're just discussing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's. It, as I say again, it depends on which area. But I think. Um, you know, there, there, there's so many stereotypes and, and judgments made um, about your your intellect and what you're capable of doing. People, you know, my mum always said to me, well, make sure you work twice as hard to achieve. Well, why is it that, that, that as people of colour, we have to do that? Well, we have to do that because we have to prove ourselves. Yeah. We can't coast along like others do we have to prove um our worth which is absolutely fine there's no issue in 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 us proving what we can do the issue is that we have to do it above and beyond our white counterparts and that's where the disparity comes in you know sancho we're about immigrants i'm from altruist jamaica uh, you're mm. from jamaica as well and i was mm. listening to a, a broadcaster in the united states of america recently just speaking about that immigrants and their they zeroed on, an, on a particular case or two cases mm -hmm. where immigrants actually uh, created crime, you know, and mm -hmm. somehow you make the impression as if just because that one or two create that mm -hmm. crime, it is mm -hmm. given an impression that is all. Mm -hmm. And so just like how black persons or persons of minority, mm -hmm. which I never like to say, have to work twice harder, that's also one of the pressure again, which is upon immigrants as well, because the least thing the, the spotlight is shown upon immigrants, and and I believe that a, a way of changing some of the game is 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 the narratives that we we utilize and what we share, what we talk about. Because I believe just like what you're doing as a councillor, as a Lord Mayor, it is actually setting the stage for others to follow through. Because not many people know about, it, right? Because your story is not a story which will go all quickly like knife crime. If somebody gets stabbed tomorrow, that's all over the paper. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm trying to say? And therefore it is incumbent upon myself and persons within the community to actually share these stories. And by mm -hmm. sharing these stories is to empower people's mind that they need to also actually, you can follow this lady mm -hmm. as an example. And I would say, I would say to anybody that I know, if anything, I can't vouch for every MP, every counselor, but I can put my hand on my heart and say, you need to follow Sancho, get some people, you know, follow what she's doing. Use that as a template. You mm. know, I mean, it's unfair with the crime situation because there's bad and good in every single community. Um, yes. And so crime is going to be committed by people from every colour, creed and background. Um, exactly, yeah. But as you say, it's really difficult to get the positive stories out there because we have our politicians, we have, you know, our pilots, our engineers, our, our doctors, our lawyers. But, you know, when you approach the media with these positive news stories, it's very difficult for them to publish, you know, those stories um, of, of the positive things that people are doing in community. There are a lot of positive people doing really um, extraordinary things, but it's difficult to get those stories out there in the mainstream press. Yeah. And mm. and, and like how, uh, I mean, uh, I don't know about barking, do you have mm. problems there in, in, in like with youth, black and black crime? Um, yeah, we students? do. We do. Um, I think it's probably permeating through the whole of, of, of London now. I mean, there was a time when I first moved to the borough that you didn't really hear about gun and knife crime in Barking and Dagenham so much um, like 10 years ago. But that has um, certainly changed now, which is a real shame. But again, there are people in the community doing great things to try and avert yeah. the young people um, I think of Stephen Addison, Box Up Crime. He was on BBC News recently, um, yes. taking the young kids off the street, teaching them how to box and showing them a different way. Um, there, there's there's lots of positive things like that happening uh, in our borough. You know, Sancho, growing up in Jamaica, um, we never used to do knife and everything like that. We would take a mm -hmm. rock stone and, and show mm -hmm. and, a, and a stone wire <laughs> or using slingshot or something like that and bust a boy head. You know, 
But yeah, you know, I've got yeah, yeah. Benedict. Yeah, Benedict uh, Lassie. I think she's in Ghana, apparently. She says Sanchez has been an inspiration for females. Oh, I know. Politicians Benedict around the world. Hello. <laughs> yeah. I first met her in Albania. See, there you are, yes, in that Albania. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> in, in Albania. As, as, I, as I said, as I said, people, I, I've, sometimes I'm trying to get all of Sanchez. Richard and I trying to get all of Sanchez, and we hear that she's somewhere. I'm um, in Timbuktu or all over the world, you know? <laughs> I was trying to, when I called you this morning, you said you're going to a hotel. So I thought, oh my days, are she one of those MPs who have their house and go have a, have a hotel next door? But I'm just kidding. You're, no. you're actually making your way to no, Wales. No. <laughs> <laughs> and while I'm here in Wales, while I'm, although it is a holiday, um, I'm actually um, going to meet the Jamaica Welsh Society. Oh, wow. Yeah, there is a Jamaican Welsh Society. I only found out about it a few days ago. So I'm going to be meeting them. Um, so that's really exciting. And and Jamaica and Wales, which I'm just finding out just a couple of days ago, has this long, rich history, particularly with the parish of Clarendon. Oh, wow. Absolutely. Oh, wow. And there are some places in Jamaica that are named after, um, that have Welsh names, which I didn't know. I knew some of them had UK names like Manchester and so on, Cambridge, but some of them have Welsh names. So yeah, I, I look forward to learning more about the historical links between Jamaica and Wales. And, I've, and, and sorry, ladies and gentlemen, if you have any quick questions or so before I let Sanchez go, um, just ping them in if anything like that, and I can ask her um, as much as possible. Uh, God, uh, I know you should be, you have a busy holiday tomorrow, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, Sanchia, in regards to um, Jamaica now, and uh, and your your view on Jamaica and the Jamaican community specific, or we spoke widely about the Caribbean community. Um, how do you see that now pointing together <clears throat> in in regards to the the? I mean, I think the crime in Jamaica is not a big thing. Well, it's there, but. I'm hearing it's, it is, the government is out of, sort of have it under control. What's mm. your view on Jamaica? Jamaicans here online, yeah. Oh, well, you know, I'm not so up to date, you know. I, I'm not, I, I haven't had the time <laughs> since becoming the mayor to really keep up to date so much with what's going on. But I know the government has extended the state of emergency. And speaking to, you know, relatives and friends in Jamaica, they're pleased with that state of emergency because they feel safer. And, you know, yeah. this issue of, of crime rate in Jamaica has been going along since I, you know, I've heard about it since I was, there was born. And it's a shame that um, that is still such a challenge for, for, for us as a country. And, um, you know, I mean, the state of emergency is, is I say, um, as you know, having an effect. But long term, what is the solution? And that's not an easy, that's really not an easy answer at all. But there has yeah. to be a long term strategy um, yeah. to, to, to reduce yeah. the crime rate. I, I was speaking to the, the High Commissioner at the Jamaica Basic School Foundation mm. last week. He was one of my guests and I was interviewing him and he, he reminded me and reminded the listeners about Vision 2030. For Jamaica mm. to become a, a, a fully fledged uh, <clears throat> yeah. first world prototype mm. in, in mm. 2030, and, and mm. I think they're on full speed on that. So we, we wish Jamaica all the best, you know. Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, well, Sanchia, any any last word that you want to share, oh. if anything, um, to the persons there? No, just just to encourage people to get involved in their local community, um, volunteer. I'm a, I'm a school governor at one of the yes. primary schools in my ward, you know, volunteer, be try to become a magistrate, um, yes. become a parent governor of your child's school and get involved in, in what the school is, is, is doing for your children. Just just get involved in your community, volunteer for an organisation. There's so many organisations um, that need help. Um, so I just encourage um, people to lend a helping hand and, and get involved. You know, one of the things that I always say, Sanjia, at times, when one understands the political process in this country and the whole aspect of consequence, I always say to persons that you'd be surprised the amount of persons that elect a prospective parliamentary candidate or councillor to run in a particular area. Mm. And if people understand that it's a consequence, that if you actually flood that consequence and become a member of your political party, you'll be surprised how you can actually make a change. Because mm. most times, 
uh, you know, as you know, most times when uh, a prospective parliamentary candidate is um, appointed, they go out and knocking on doors, mm, and people yeah. are wondering, where do you come from? Who gave you the mm. right to me? Yeah? Mm. Well, there's a process, as you say, and and you can only be part of that process of selecting um, your 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 local government and um, local government MEP and um, MP candidates by being a member of a political party. And each political party will have a different process for selection. But unless you are a member of that party, you won't be able to be involved in the selection. And also for the selection of leaders of parties, that, that yes. those come down to the members as well. So it's really important to, to become a member of a political party and get active. Well, well I, I think they're talking about having different they're starting to creating some new parties now because they believe that the left and mm. the right is now a bit Well, they are. Complete. I mean, we've got the Women's Equality Party and so on. But mm. UK is very much still a, a dominant two-party two political system between Labour and the Conservatives. But there are, you know, anybody can set up a party as long as you follow the Electoral Commission rules in relation to that. Yes, yes. <laughs> well, Sanchia. I want to thank you so much. This is just a start. Of course, thank this you. is this is this is the pre um pre to the red chair because we've got to get you on the red chair um <laughs> at some point. Mm -hmm. And uh and, and ladies and gentlemen, Sanchi is also one of the directors of Facilitators for Better Jamaica, my organization. And this is and this is classic, and I say to people all the while, you know, you can be of polit different political persuasion, but if you understand the call of God upon your life, you can work with anybody. Mm. You know, because mm. you know, uh, we 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 have been friends for years. You we worked we we were on the shadow MP scheme, uh, with Operation Black Vote on the Simon Woolley. You were shadowing Labour Council Labour um, parliamentarians. I was mm. shadowing Conservative parliamentarians. Mm. We sit on the same team. We work together. We and uh, we have different political ideology, but that's the least. The most important mm. thing is that we have the same goal in mind to seek to empower our people and empower mm -hmm. our, and you know as I say all the while I don't believe in this thing called um, ethnic minority because as a Jamaican <laughs> I'm always I'm always a majority <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all right you. well listen okay one, one th thank you so much and of course people will ask questions and please follow up on the thread as well um, yes, people I might want do. it directly and one more thing I my regards to Mr. Alessi as well okay no problem can i just say this behind every good man is a, uh, there's a good woman but behind every but beside you there must be a good man <laughs> <laughs> absolutely absolutely yeah awesome right. yes yes okay see you later okay, thank you thank you bye-bye bye-bye thanks okay ladies and gentlemen i want to thank so much for Sanchia, alicia um mayor of Barking and Dagenham uh, who came on and actually just shared some insight as I said before she's a new mayor of Barking and Dagenham the first Caribbean woman to hold that post and she's from Cambridge uh, Jamaica um, came to the UK at the tender age of three months but um, being very active and very proactive with the Jamaican community Caribbean community per se British community per se widely through and also one of the directors of facilitators for better Jamaica we spoke on a few different things we spoke on issues like um, the fact that she's a lot in Europe, the fact that she, she stood to be an, uh, an, an, a, a member of the European Parliament, she wasn't successful. But guess what? Just to the fact that she actually stood, it actually opened doors. It actually opened doors where she was appointed by uh, the, the, the then Prime Minister David Cameron to sit on some particular committees there in Europe. So it shows that it is not sometimes about winning an election. Sometimes people say, "Oh, oh, I, I won't, I won't run unless I win." Uh, you know, I think the most important thing is actually putting yourself forward, putting yourself forward as a voice. Putting it. Listen, I've run three uh, many times, uh, three three times as a councillor. I lost, you know, um, but I won because at the end of the day, you get to meet some great and fantastic people, um, and you know, and you're able to actually engage a lot with. Um, persons and you get to build yourself you get to understand the whole dynamics of the british system something you got to understand 
um, the battles that you fight, who are your enemies, who are, who are the persons that you're working with. So Sancho Alessia uh, is a classic and a typical and a very good example of someone that ladies need to follow, ladies need to watch, and put yourself forward for elective and uh, position, put yourself forward as governors, put yourself forward as magistrate, put yourself forward as parliamentarians, put yourself forward as councillors, because one cannot afford for the legacy of the Windrush era and of those who fought together to be slipped into the abyss. Yep. So I want to, I want to thank you so much for that. And uh, the good stories, more is going to come. Yes, there's always good story. At the same time, I'll still always be digging in and dealing with issues which are not um, positive. You know, I'll be touching on the whole Brexit factors at different times. I'll touch on the Trump factor at different time. I'll touch on the Boris factor at time. My views may not resonate with the popular view, but at the same time, I believe as much as possible, it is important to engage. It is important to have dialogue and it's important to have, uh, as I normally say, creating an effective platform for effective discourse, seeking solutions and impacting action. That only comes by with people. So I want to thank you, um, Elaine, um, Sinclair for coming on, Victoria Nekwe, Benedict Lasser, Paul Johnson, Lyndon Wizard, Iris Fuller, Sonia Gray, thank you, Lyndon Wizard, um, David Thompson, how are you, buddy? Mike Ricketts, thank you, um, DJ Law, Zoe, Chopper John, Chopper John, we need to link, Courtney Hamilton, Shanika, Saffron, um, Shirley McGreal, thank you so much, and those on Instagram, alone. hey, Dean, how are you? Um, for, for, for coming on as well, and uh, have a wonderful week. I would say have an exciting week it's going to be a great week no matter what we make the week what we want it to be we we go into the week and we change the game we change the stage we create the platform we create the table we create the chair we make our destiny what we want it to be no matter what even and this is my word for today you know and i've been thinking about this i've always been thinking about things that no matter what no matter what the circumstance that one is in, the fact that one is in the circumstance, think of yourself like ice. Think of yourself as um, syrup or whatever that will change the game, change the, 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 the color, change the style, change the temperature. Ice, change the temperature. Syrup, change the color. You know what I mean? As much as possible. And there... That gives you an angle because sometimes I believe persons believe that they are not able to change a game. They are not able to actually make a big difference. But I, I say this to you. It is important that you recognize that you can change a game and you can make a big difference. One can either be sitting in the bleachers and making noise. And guess what? A ball can hit you from the bleachers. Or you can be on the field playing the game where you can kick the ball. And hit those in the bleachers, figuratively speaking, not hurt them. Okay, so thank you very much. And uh, as, as usual, uh, it's always a pleasure having you. Please share uh, my video. Please um, like. Uh, please subscribe to Silburn TV. Silburn. I'm on Twitter, um, Instagram, uh, WhatsApp. There's a Silburn Show WhatsApp group as well. If you're interested, let me know. You get the number for that, and you can join as persons on the WhatsApp group. Get. Um, first hand information as well and as well remember the solution oriented summit which i did the other day in brings over 10 speakers awesome event what is going to happen all those shows is going to go out, and we're looking for advertisers persons with some really good um package that we go out there and we're putting up all these different speakers because they all have gems stefana consigna stephen gislaine um all the different um persons charles kieran um um um, what what is it? We we we've got Paula Perry, Cherry Johnson, uh, Ruth, um, um, Rachel O'Keller, and all these different persons there, capturing the essence of, and the display of our splendor, of you, our people. Amen. Have a good night and have a good week, and I'll see you whenever. Bye bye. Thank you.